What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is September 13th of 2017. So as you all have been keeping up with my channel, we've been talking about how Bitcoin as well as some other altcoins will see a continued pullback as we continue into the bear market and all the fighting that's been going on with China and Bitcoin as a whole. And quite frankly folks, as much as I fundamentally believe in Bitcoin in the long term, we made a right calling. As we did with the past pullback, we predicted that the market would see a pretty strong pullback. And not only had it already seen one, but we would see a continuation of that pullback. And folks, I don't think we're exactly done yet. This is very common in markets. I really want to you know, spend some time to teach you all this rather than tell you like, oh, it's buy or sell, buy or sell, because you can decide to do what you want with this. But I had a lot of people you know, in the comments down below, we're all entitled to our own opinions and stuff. And I, again, I'm no guru or whiz, so I like hearing criticism. But again, time and time again, the principles of traditional equities markets apply to cryptocurrency. Markets cycle, okay? History is doomed to repeat itself. And we're seeing it right now. Whereas a lot of people said Bitcoin was unstoppable, or they said Ethereum was unstoppable, they have breaks in their run-ups. They have pullbacks. They have cool-down periods. Even if it doesn't make fundamental sense, even if all the hype in the world is continuing to build back behind it, it can happen. They're not invincible. And we're seeing that right now. You go down here on the 24 uh, the 24-hour change in percentage. Bitcoin almost down 9%. Ethereum down 9%. Generally speaking, just a few minutes ago, all of these uh, top five leaders, the large caps, were down over 10%. It's a, it's a bearish market right now, folks. 14% down for Neem. We have IOTA down almost 17%. Omise Go down 18%. Neo, oh, Neo down 16%. Still buying at these lows. Quantum, 16%. And we even have ones like ARC down 17%. That's one of our items for the month. I mean, there is some serious negative downside right now. There's a lot of negative mindset in the, the market. And I think we're kind of in an echo chamber right now of fudding, of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So many people are spreading panic that really doesn't even matter at the end of the day. Right now, we're completely fine where we are. There's no reason to panic in any sense. But again, it happens all the time. You can either be a part of that 90 to 95% of people who get caught in the emotions and the roller coaster ride of markets, or you can be two steps ahead of the game and you can be successful. You can be a winner in these markets. It's not hard. You don't need to be a genius. But you got to know, I'm going to teach you all, know when to get out and to see when markets are topping. So actually, I'm going to take it here to the yearly here. Let's keep it on the yearly. So we had the pullback back here as well back in July. And I've been talking about it on my channel. If you go back and watch my videos, you will know that back here, I was talking pretty confidently about a pullback. Now, why is that? Well, we can obviously see that not only do we have one of our first kind of, uh, kind of I, I say pit stops in the sense of bull runs, and you usually find this along the way somewhere. And you have this first pit stop, and then you kind of run up, and you, you, you continue to see the exuberance pop into markets. And then you have a pretty strong pullback again, but it comes back up and everyone's like, oh, it's another one of these pit stops. We're going to keep on going higher. But then you see the market tops out. It really stopped out pretty much at the exact same valuation that it did in the previous uh, pre previous few days where we saw the peak in the market. And it couldn't get up above there again. We only got to $114 billion. And then the market started turning over. Now people are like, oh, don't worry. It's just another pit stop. We don't always have to go to new highs. And then they, of course, get caught in this kind of mentality that the Bitcoin and your profits that you made are invincible. I mean, if you're holding for the very, very long term and you don't care about trading the market, then you don't have to listen to me. But again, if you're trying to swing the market, look for when markets have a pretty big reduction in value like this. When it starts to show that fearful sign, know that most likely it's probably just the beginning, especially if you have a run-up like this. Just because there's optimism on something doesn't mean people are going to continue to pay a premium on the current market price. Some people think it's ridiculous that Bitcoin was at $5,000. Some other people think it's worth twenty grand because they've been in the space for longer. you got to understand that there's so much more at stake here, folks. And... I mean, we saw it. Markets slashed pretty much in half, down to $60 billion. And I think we're going to see something relatively similar. Now, what do I think we're going to see? Do I think we're going to slash markets in half? No. We went to $175 billion at the peak during this bull run. It's been phenomenal. 
Uh, we've seen Bitcoin more than double in value since the bottom here. Uh, and Bitcoin reached up to 5,000. We had Ethereum come back to its fresh highs in USD valuation. Litecoin rallying to new highs. Uh, I mean, there's just so much optimism in this market. And eventually, we started to see the pullback. I saw this and I told you all, guys, this is really just the beginning. Let's start preparing our positions. And hopefully, let's look for the next stop level or the next level for the sell-off to stop where we can buy. And we've been talking about this level forever. And really... We're only about, I mean, if we were to rough it off to your 115 billion, I think the peak was 117 billion. I mean, we're only 20 billion dollars away, folks. We were just 30 billion to 35 billion the other day. Just don't cut off the concept that it could happen. And I really want to take home what I think is going to lead this to that position. I think the majority of this um, valuation of the market that needs to be slashed to get to that level is going to come from Bitcoin. It's plain and simple. It's going to be a lot of the ICO market, but as well as that, it's most likely going to be Bitcoin. Bitcoin, in my mind, as I've been saying from this channel, and I will continue to attest to it, I might not be exactly right on it, but I will tell you all, I think we are going to breach the 50-day here, which we're currently kind of tethering on right now. Over the next few days, we'll, we'll continue to break through the 50-day, as it can't, you know, as the price will most likely not be able to hold up with that kind of 50-day momentum, and we're going to break through it because the market was a little quick, too fast, and too exuberant. And I think what we're going to see exuberance make up all the difference in the next few days and really sell off to somewhere in this range, around 30, uh, 32, or sorry, I, I would say generally 34, 3500 is more of my target price, but it really could be anywhere in this level right here. That's the last level of support we really have. And Liquid Indicators is surprisingly coming up to support that philosophy, the 100 day. The 100 day is coming in just like it did in the past, and it's probably going to act like a level of support for this over exuberant run up. I mean, it happens, it's happened before. We've seen it. We've seen it when it breaches the 50 day, when it breaches the 21 day, when it loses the momentum indicator, when it loses the uh, bull run, like kind of more long term bull run support, which is the 50 day. And then we have the 100 day. And the 100 day usually comes into support or the 200 day. I don't think we'd pull back to the 200 day. I think the 100 day is a perfect indicator to look for. And, you know, it really depends. Now, if China were to come out tomorrow and state news that they were banning exchanges, I believe this would drop like a rock past here. Uh, it would it would have a flash crash probably to the 200 day. But quite frankly, I don't think that's going to happen. It hasn't really happened, folks. There's been rumors, if anything. I know a lot of people have referred to like Charlie Lee's tweets and a lot of people saying, oh, you know, I have insider information that they're sh shutting down the exchanges. If anything, it's temporary, folks. It's nothing to fear in the long term. Any position you have to add down at fresh lows. It's such an opportunity this early on in the market to have these kinds of really strong pullbacks in the market. They're great for the long term, and they're great to add. So again, I'm not being a financial advisor. You got to do your own research and pick what cryptocurrencies you want to hold for the long term. I know what I want to hold. I know what's optimistic in my eyes. You've got to find that for yourself. But I'm going to leave you off with one last thing. I know I've been kind of a, a negative Nancy on crypto markets. I really want to show you all one last factor as to why I think uh, we could really see Bitcoin have the pullback that I think it can. So the last pullback we had really was from the big even at 3000 to 1850. If you go back and look at the charts as we were talking about, this is the pullback I'm referring to right here. The pullback in total for a percentage was a 38% pullback. Pretty drastic, right? Well, it's common in market cycles. It happens all the time. And equities markets sometimes pull back even greater. Uh, but really, that really isn't too bad for how much exuberance Bitcoin had in its price action. How crazy would it be to say that Bitcoin can go from 5,000 to 3,400? Seems like a much more drastic drop, right? Well, it's only 32%. It's simple math, folks. It happens all the time. Markets repeat history. And I think we'll see it happen again. We've got a few more hundred dollars to go, most likely, in Bitcoin. Nothing to fear. If you've got some positions, I wouldn't, I wouldn't FUD, I wouldn't sell. I mean, the real time to get out was really up here. And if you missed it, it's okay. It's nothing to worry about, nothing to panic about. Crypto's got a long road to go. And if you're here right now, you're here early. So start setting strategies 
to buy Bitcoin down in this range, in my opinion. If you feel like starting to add right now, hey, at least you're buying on a cheaper end than 5,000. Do as you please, folks. Follow your strategy. And if you want more information, if you want to learn a little bit more, and maybe if you're new to my channel, go watch my Trading Cryptocurrencies for Beginners and Intermediates videos. Those are great ways to get started and learn how to time up these markets and stay ahead of the game. That's all I want for you all. I want you all to learn, and I want you all to become better investors and traders, not FOMO and FUD. Don't think with emotion. Think with strategy. Well, anyways, everyone, that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.